Welcome to the Soul Seeker Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Kabert, and this year marks the fifth birthday of the Soul Seeker Podcast. I started this pod back in 2019 when I was taking my first steps on the path of remembering. And at the time, the tagline for the show was a journey of self discovery. A year later, it became a journey of remembering. Yet, what I know now is back then I was still seeking. And what I've come to know now is that it's the journey of seeking that brings us the silent, slow stillness of acceptance. And therein lies our own innate wisdom. It's my mission now to eradicate the glorification of hustle culture, as it was my drive in entrepreneurship that led to a greater whole. And that's because I was outsourcing my sovereignty rather than looking within. So let this be your invitation to take a deep breath in and remember that at any time we can shift our thoughts and our feelings to create the outer world in which we wish to live. Soul Seekers, it's time to grow. Let's go. All right, Soul Seekers, here we are back again with Tim Grimes, the man himself, the author of Relax More, Try Less, and so many other amazing books that you can find on Amazon that are all about manifestation, Neville Goddard's work, and I forget the other guy, but I'm sure we'll get into the other person's work as well. That Tim's just helped me so much on my journey, and he helps so many others. So I'm stoked to have you here, Tim. But for all of us, before we dive into this, for myself, for you, Tim, and for you listeners, let's just ground in some with some breath. So if you're driving, don't close your eyes, anything, but you can still breathe. So for anyone here that wants to join us, just find a comfortable seat. And if you're in a place where you can close your eyes, this is just going to be for a minute or two. Feel free to start to close down your eyes, feeling your feet on the floor and through the nose, inhaling all the way up, sipping in a bit more at the top, through the mouth, let it go, audible sigh. Another inhale, slow as you can, all the way up. As you sip in a bit more air at the top, rolling back the eyes, releasing any tension between the eyes, just rolling them back gently, holding the breath. And exhale, let it go, let it go, let it go. Last one, biggest breath yet, all the way up. Sipping in a bit more air at the top, holding the breath. Rolling back the eyes, releasing tension where you can, just feeling. And exhale, let it go. Your own time, flickering the eyes back open, letting the breath return to its natural state and rhythm. So much better. How are you feeling, Tim? I'm feeling great feeling great (laughs) i'm stoked to be here with you like i said tim's a returning guest and it 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 truly is an honor you know i don't remember how i came across your work but i was like relax more try less this book is so good and i just met up with a buddy out in phoenix arizona he lives out there and i was in town and we caught up for dinner and he was just like electric. He was, he's like, everything's just coming through and just saying how much abundance and life is amazing. And it's just opening up for him. And I was like, that's amazing, man. And what do you attribute that to? And he starts to go, well, I wrote my book, my first book. And, you know, it was just after that, everything came through. And my author coach kind of told me that would happen. And I was like, interesting. And then he goes, you know what? Also, it was, it was that book you told me about, Relax More, Try Less. And I'm like, really? So here we are with Tim. It's really like one of those things when I say it's an honor and that I'm sharing the book, I am. And it's making impact with my community as well. So appreciate you being here. Thanks, Sam. I really, I love that. And um, I love talking to you. Uh, As I've told you before, you're one of the few people in the space that I know who really, um, explores the dark side (laughs) and also is really into this, you know, somatic healing 
not just mental, but the whole mind body thing. And it's, it's always great talking to you. And I love being a guest on your show. Um, and that's so good about the book because that book's, it's not old, but I wrote it back in 2015. So it's almost 10 years old. So I love that people are still being exposed to it. Um, that was definitely the intention when I wrote it just to spread that rather simple, but beguiling, beguilingly, if that's, if I said that right, simple message where it's, you know, simple to say, but for most of us, at least harder to practice. And, um, I remember reading that book again. I think I read it like a year and I've tried to read it every year or two. And I was, I was reading it and I was like, man, this book's pretty good. And then I was also like, man, this book is tight. Like it's, it's easy what, what, what to, to digest, but then to, to practice it is, is a practice, you know? And it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I was very inspired to write it. And it sounds like your friend was very inspired to write the book they just wrote. Um, uh, and often I feel like the stuff that we share with that energy is, is what um, affects others the most, hopefully, you know, it's, I know that sounds cliche, but I think it's, it's true from what I've seen. So that makes sense. I mean, you know, Neville's book is feeling is the secret. That one's not yours, right? Neville yeah. Goddard, that's guys. the classic yeah. Neville. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling is the secret. I mean, that's what you're talking about right there when it, we're being true and honest with what we're feeling and sharing it. Like that's another form of feeling is the secret. And it, isn't it so wild and such a trip to read your own book? Yeah. I mean, there's this great story. I don't know if I've told you this before and it's, you know, who knows how accurate it is, but W. Clement Stone, who was a great, one of my favorite, like self improvement, motivational people. He started Success Magazine. He partnered with Napoleon Hill, you know, during the latter, the end of Napoleon Hill's career. And like one day he came in and Napoleon Hill was reading Think and Grow Rich. And uh, W. Clement Stone was like, why are you reading that book? And he's like, well, I, I have to remember what's in it. You know, I have to, I have to process it again and again. So I think that's a mark of, um, something inspired when you want to come back to it or feel like when you do come back to it, you realize, Oh, wow, this is like, this still resonates with me. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it, it's a trip and it's, a, it's a good, it's a good thing. You know, um, another good thing. One of the biggest compliments I've ever gotten is like, uh, sometimes my wife who ma majored in English, she's a therapist, but she majored in English in undergrad, like, I'll have her, you know, feel like, oh, you might like this book or whatever. And she'll say, oh, this reminds me of something you wrote. And I'm like, wow, that's a mm -hmm. big compliment, you know, because it's a book I love. So that yeah. is. Yeah. And how many books have you authored now? I mean, my books are short, Sam, you know, Still so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I, I, I think uh, I've edited, a, you know, I edited a lot of books, like you mentioned, uh, a lot of Neville books. Um, but I wrote commentary, extensive commentary, including Relax More, Try Less. That's the first book I wrote on Neville's teachings, but it's mainly my commentary. Three books on Neville. Um, and then I've written uh, a couple of short, very short guides, like, you know, 15, 20, 30 page guides. Then I wrote The Joy of Not Thinking um, mm -hmm. back in 2019, which is probably my most personal book. That's, uh, that's a book I've read. I try to read every year. Um, and then I wrote The Law of Attraction Simplified, which is a longer book. And I think a book that a lot of people in the manifestation community would probably um, get something out of because it's a very sober look at the manifesting process, which I know both of us are a fan of shadow work and like being open with ourselves during the process and not spiritually bypassing, saying, oh, I'm high vibe all the time where I'm all, I have to force good feelings when they're not there. That the law of attraction simplified really goes in depth about that. And then I did a uh, money, your friend this past year, which is just about the stress we feel around money that most of us feel about money and um, how we can improve that relationship with money. So I, that's uh yeah, I don't know, six, six lengthy books, a couple of guides. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. No, the reason why I ask is more and more often I'm really hearing from my community like, hey, I, I think I have a book in me. And I truly believe we all have books in us 
And to your point, like, I mean, I do this too. It's like, oh, but it was just a workbook or that was a shorter book or, oh, those were my first three books. And it was like big font. And, you know, it was, it right. doesn't really resonate. We, we totally gaslight ourselves in that kind of way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it all counts. I mean, the reality is like, I say they're short, but that doesn't my honestly, like usually the, like I, my shorter guides are some of my, the favorite, my favorite stuff I've ever written. Actually, my, my wife's favorite book of mine is probably this, this guide I wrote called Wild Calm. It's like 25 pages long. Yeah. And I mean, you know, at the end of the day, like if we can be succinct and get it out it's there. the best. Yeah, that's what matters most. I mean, I'm listening to a book right now that's 12 hours long and it's kind of a requirement to have like this influencer on my podcast. I won't say who it is, but it's just like, Oh, this is the same stuff over and over and over again. And like, I really love what this person is teaching, but I haven't like listened or checked out this specific book. And I'm like, this actually feels like there's a lot of ego here. And we can, we can see that even how I'm just like rambling right now. Like I already made the point, but now I feel like, Oh, I need to, you know, justify and give more behind. It's like, no, the point is made. It's hard to be succinct, and I I have a lot of, I, you know I'm, I'm I I always am working on my people pleasing because I'm such a people mm. pleaser, and uh, what's great about writing is that if you're honest with yourself, you can cut down a lot of stuff, um, and get right to the point. I think that's one reason I like the joy of not thinking so much. That book's like sixty pages long, and I could have easily blasted out 200 pages 250 pages in that um but i was like no i can say this probably more succinctly uh yeah i don't know though i mean be, when it comes to writing everyone has a different style and i think you just have to embrace the style that you have what's coming through you because you know I don't know to the degree of your listener, Sam, but I've, I've had a lot of people, you know, say, Oh, I have a book in me or I've started working on a book. And, um, most people don't follow through and do it. And they definitely have it in them to follow through and do it. And it's, uh, it's too bad if they, if they really want to do it, you know, Sam and I are examples of like, if you really want to, to write a book, you can do it. Like, it's not, don't be, it's not too daunting. Like if you feel you have it in you, you certainly can do it. And there's all these great tools these days that make it easier than ever to do. Uh, so just do it. Yeah. Yeah. And what I tell people all the time, I feel like I've had this conversation, uh, quite a bit frequently is create a mind map and you're not, if you're not, these are literally the steps I would take. And if you're not familiar with the mind map we think of it as like a brain dump and at least an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper minimum but if you can get like one of those large like easel board type uh massive post-it note type things that you'd see like in a business meeting just write the topic in the middle it doesn't have to be the name of the book what do you want to talk about right and then circle that and then just draw a line out to the first topic and then keep doing that and once you have these lines with the topic then you start to create like subtopics and then from there we'll move that into a google document or whatever you prefer um, but create an outline and there you can start to see where they intersect and you can start to create it like sequentially so it's building off of one another and then what I recommend to people is show up every single day. It doesn't matter if you show up to your laptop or if you're writing by hand, but most people showing up to your laptop and just for a minute, just for a minute, you just stare at the screen. It can be as, as little as a minute as staring at the screen and be like, all right, it's, it's not working today. I'm moving on. But at least you did the damn thing, right? And then other days you're going to show up and 2000 words are going to flow out of you. And that's uh, really how I approach it. I think of it as writing in bite-sized sections in terms of the outline as if it were a blog post. And a typical blog post is going to be like 500 to 750 words, maybe 2000 words if it's a guide. 500 words should take you 30 to 60 minutes. So 2000 words would take you about an hour, maybe two hours, um, which is a great writing session. And my recent book, uh, Overcome the Overwhelm, 
I believe that's about 30,000 pages, normal size font. And 30,000 words. Yeah. You said yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks 30, for correcting me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 30,000 uh, pages would be intense. <laughs> yeah, 30,000 words. So think about it this way. 30,000 words equates to, I think it was like 167 pages. <laughs> like I, I think anything over 100 pages is like a solid book. You know, oh, to yeah. your point, like 60 pages is like definitely smaller, but 100, like that's a good start. That's that's good. And that's not, you know, 200 pages where it's like, okay, that's that's actually like getting kind of deep there in a lot of work. So going back to 150 pages, 30,000 words, if your goal is 500 words to 2000 words per writing session, that's not that daunting when you play it out that way. And then the exactly. final tip, the final tip real quick is uh, writing in the flow. When you go that outline, don't write in order, write in what is feeling most in alignment. And if you're wanting to reference stats and studies, just put a comment in that section and come back to that later. Shoot, there's still more. And then um, before, before each writing session, read what you wrote the day before, not to edit it grammatically. Let the editor do that. It, read it to get back into that mindset and see if like oh i went on a tangent there and i didn't really like bring it back and edit it that way so that's kind of like those are my top tips on how to write a book i'm i'm loving this this is great i mean i uh not that those are gr great tips and i i think you know again it's easier than ever to do this because mm -hmm. Just for, for me, I have a lot of uh, creativity when I speak out loud to myself or talk out loud. So another hack, if you know, to, I can quickly share is like use just an audio recording system or like Otter AI or uh, something like that. And you, you just record, you know, brain dump verbally. If you like to speak out loud to yourself, just talk out loud to yourself and see what comes up. You might, if you speak for 10, 15 minutes or even two minutes to your point about just looking at the screen, if you just talk to yourself, record yourself for a minute or two a day, some days you're going to be more inspired to record yourself for longer than that. That's going to build really quickly into material that you can then call down. And when you're calling something down now, you can use chat GPT or another AI system. So it becomes much easier to do that. It's also much easier than before to expand an, on an idea. Uh, like, you know, you let's say that I had, you know, I, I have a three minute recording and I have it on Otter AI and I then I switch it to chat GPT and I say, you know, please make this, I don't know how many three minutes would be like, whatever, like, let's just say it's 500 words, or whatever, make this 500 words, please expand this into like a 500, or excuse me, like a, a 3000 word chapter. And chat GPT will do that. And you can also, you know, there's ways to configure chat GPT or other AI systems to make it more personalized, you know, so it has more of your tone while you're doing it. But these are all just hacks and different ways to really quickly build a new book. Um, I'm working on something right now, not like, not seriously, but like, it's just a little side project. It's just a couple of YouTube videos I did and just having that transcribed and I'm not, and I'm making it into probably will be a short, a short book that will, I think be pretty good, you know? So. That's good, yeah. 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 The AI and chat GPT part is extremely fascinating. And now I see you, where you stand on that. Um, it, Cause with me, like, I think that's really a slippery slope. And I I wrote a book in a weekend last year called uh, Psychedelic Compass. And it's, to your point, a smaller book. It's probably 60, 70 pages. And it's like not eight and a half by 11 size, but it's a workbook. So it's larger and it's got a lot of journaling prompts, you know, so it's really like just basic, but it was designed to be that way to discern if like plant medicine, psychedelic therapy would be right for someone. And I was having trouble researching like the, the good use cases and actual benefits for each of these different psychedelics I was talking about. So I actually used chat GPT to get that information because just Googling alone was hard to find exactly what I was looking for. And then I, I rewrote it in my own words, but like, I still hold guilt for that, for using like chat GPT, um, you know, because for, for me personally, I'm like, oh, it just it just doesn't feel right uh, to 
use chat GPT to write a book for, for me, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, so for me, I can tell you, here I am flaunting the benefits of chat GPT. I'm like you, Sam, like my tone is too unique and AI has not caught up to that whatsoever yet, as far as I'm concerned. And I've heard other writers say this. Um, I don't know if it ever will. I think it in many ways probably will sooner, like sooner than we even think. But um, but I just think chat GPT is, is, is great for, you know, it, it's a great tool and like, it's a really good editor too. And, and it, if you have a word dump, if you do, you know, just free, free journaling on your laptop or record something and it's 5,000 words, it's, it's very effective. I find uh, at reducing 5,000 words to like a thousand words of like more refined stuff. And then like, I go back and use my own tone to switch it. And then I'm like, you know, is this grammatically uh, correct? And it will, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, I obsess over most of my books. Uh, that's kind of why I'm doing this YouTube thing now as I'm experimenting to see how loose I can be. Cause I used to be much more loose mm. um, money. Your friends, like a short book. It's like, there's a journal at the end. So it's like, yeah, it's like a hundred pages, maybe not even a, a written content. I spent two years writing it. I rewrote mm. it three, three times. So it's not like I'm, I'm going to be like chat GPT it um, for the creative part, part of the process usually. Yeah. Let's get into money. Uh, your friend, just a moment. Um, I, I just wanted to mention I've been using chat GPT a ton to like copy paste a sentence that I'm emailing or maybe a social media post and be like, is this grammatically correct? And it's like, yes, it is. Or no, it's not, but here would be. And for me, like, I know the way I write is the way I speak. And sometimes that does me a disservice because I kind of structure sentences backwards. So I know for me, like just if I'm putting something out in email or social media, most of the time I'm like, hopefully people understand that it's a damn social media post or like an email. It's not like, Hey, this is my best work ever. Right. You know, and maybe I should be approaching it that way. I don't know. But point being like, I have this, persona of now finally this year i feel like i'm an author after my sixth book you know someone said something to me around the time of writing this book and i was like oh no i'm not what do you mean an author and i was like oh, well i guess i've written five books and this is oh yeah i am an author so i'm like finally like being like oh i feel like an author whereas in the past i didn't so it's that kind of perception being like, well, I can't put things out there that are not grammatically correct. And that's actually one of my weaknesses, like commas, semicolons, and writing sentences backwards, you know? So. But you're, I mean, you're you, you're a good writer. That's the irony, you know, but I'm, I'm, I do the same thing now, chat GPT, like for all my emails and stuff, I'm like, please check this. Cause like, it's, it's not my best work. It's my tone. We write the same way. I mean, it's true. Yeah. So it's, it's finding that happy medium, you know? Um, but again, I think both of us are sharing this information, like just so hopefully more people are inspired. If you want to write, it's a great time to do it. And it's a great time to get a book published. It's so easy to get a book published. Like, yeah you know, layout, editing, all this stuff is, is right at your fingertips now. Um, so yeah, I, I encourage people to, if they're inspired, feel, you should, you should write a book. It feels, it feels good once it's completed, you know, to share it with people. And if you guys have questions about writing books, reach out to me and or Tim, and I'm sure he'd be happy to help you. Absolutely. I know I am. And, you know, I have a team of VAs, a podcast on how to work with virtual assistants, VAs, and it's really not that hard to get everything else done. Like, don't even worry about the formatting or how do you actually publish it? That's just the mind trying to keep you stuck. And a lot of people get stuck there. What we just gave you between Tim's advice of Otter AI and working with it with ChatGPT. GPT, what I shared, that's exactly where, what you need to do first and what you need to do now. Everything else will come later. So no worries on that. All right. So we've been talking about like the masculine or the conscious mind, you know, as you put it, maybe it's Neville. I, I, I get you and Neville confused now because I was introduced. To both of <laughs> don't you don't say that. Don't say that. Cause I don't want the <laughs> Neville community coming after me. That used to be okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I say tongue in cheek, but like, honestly, I, I listen to a lot of, or I, when I got into a, a lot of his work and your work. So I'm like, I don't know if that was a book by him or you, but it, you, neither here nor there. 
the subconscious mind is equated to the feminine and the conscious mind is equated to the masculine. And we've been in the masculine talking about do. And when it comes to manifesting or any of these type of things, like creating this so that it's a reality, there's a certain level of masculine and taking action that's needed. Uh, now, could you speak to that a little bit more of like the dance between the masculine and feminine when we're envisioning something that we're calling in and how we would approach it with both of those energies? I can try to, um, you know, <laughs> people should read relax more, try less. Um, no, go. it's, it's, yeah, it's, so this is what I would say, and this is, this is Neville. Also, Emil Coué, that was the other guy. Emil Coué yeah. is my, he's my favorite. Um, and very, very few people know about him relatively compared to Neville. Um, so the masculine, as you just said, Sam, it's we more like rational action taking, doing day to day, you know, I'm going to mind map, I'm going to use Otter AI or whatever. The feminine, you could say, is your imagination. It's... Um, Kue, who really taught Neville, uh, you know, who ne Neville got a lot from Kue. Kue said on a practical level, your imagination, your subconscious, and your unconscious are synonymous. They're basically the same thing. Like if we're trying to get medical or scientific, it might not be so, but, you know, people say, oh, it was unconscious. I did it unconsciously, you know, and like, it's one thing like you lift your hand unconsciously, but like, if it's like, if you see yourself doing something you don't want to do or find yourself like in a good flow and you're like, Oh, I just did that unconsciously. That means like actually your imagination is working either for you or against you. So the reason I talk so much about relaxation and trying to cultivate a more relaxed inner state, both by doing very, um, you know, explicit relaxation exercises, like the breath exercise we did at the beginning uh, or, you know, meditating, yoga, lying on the couch, and also cultivating just like feeling more at ease and inwardly relaxed as you go about your day and maybe are doing all these very quote unquote masculine type of things in terms of taking action is because if we cultivate this sense of relaxation, first of all, it feels good. That's reason enough to do it. <laughs> My opinion, a lot of times to try to cultivate to feel good more of the time by just feeling more inwardly relaxed. But secondly, it makes it so our imagination or our subconscious, whatever you want to call it, feels at ease and then is able to work with our more rational masculine mind in a more harmonious way. So instead of us being worried about something at work and thinking imaginatively, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. And usually this is quote unquote unconscious. It's unconscious just in the sense that we're having the thought loop basically before we go to work that it's going to be a hard day and that we can't do this. If we cultivate relaxation in a more relaxed, you know, this is going to be relatively easy. This is doable. Everything's fine. Even if I screw up, I'll just fix it. I'm relaxed about this. If we cultivate that attitude before we go to work, then when we get to work, it's going to be a heck of a lot easier. And we're going to have more success. We're going to be more creative. We're going to be more, more willing to uh, think outside of the box. We're going to probably communicate better with people we're working with. That's that's the that's the thing right there i mean that's that's like merging the masculine and feminine but as i said it's a, this is a this is a continual practice and it should be hopefully like a a joyful gratifying practice because you're using if we're gonna you know divide these into masculine feminine or conscious subconscious we're we're this is part of our physiological system we're using this stuff no matter what so it's like well we might as well be relaxed and try to align you know and harmonize the masculine and feminine as much as possible thank you there's there's a lot in there that i think is really going to help some people and i actually got a listener question uh, a questioner from uh listeners i have a few uh, that i want to ask you and one of them actually relates to this really well and this is kind of like backtracking and like starting at the foundation type stuff question is how do you determine the goals or desires to manifest 
and where do you begin? So then uh, my follow-up question was, could you expand? <laughs> um, the, to which this person said, honestly, I don't even know how I begin. I, do I just think of the life I want and go from there? Or do I make a list with things I must have and speak that into existence? So the general answer that I would give is you, first and foremost, always you got to do what feels right to you, for you. You know, you don't listen to Tim, you don't listen to Sam, you listen to yourself. Um, what I found is that, <laughs> Sam, I think you're probably going to this, you got to get out of your head about it. Mm. Usually, like, we're too masculine, if you want to use that term, too rational about our desires. What I would do, a very simple exercise I like to do, is you could do something like the breathing that Sam did at the beginning of, of the episode, and then after you feel just comfortable, and again, Sam's written a lot about this, and there's all these other simple relaxation exercises you could use as well. After you feel just relaxed physically, mentally, I would like put my hand over my heart. And I would ask myself, what do I want? And then I would be quiet. I would listen. And it's, it's okay if no answer comes up, I think if you do that for five or 10 minutes, your imagination will start to give you a response, but it, it's okay if it doesn't give you some like clear response right away. If you do this for like five, 10, 15 minutes a day for several days in a row, you will get a response about what you really want. You know, actually in, in Money Your Friend, I talk, uh, I, you know, suggest a similar exercise because it's getting in touch with like the deepest part of your desire, not necessarily like the external desire, but what that external desire uh, signifies for you. For instance, health or harmony or, or peace or love. And that is what getting, getting relaxed and still and then you know, just asking yourself, what do I really want can enable us to do, um, I think, in a, in a really nice way, a really gentle way. And, and it also can be very surprising what comes up. But you got to do what, what works best for you. You know, it, if these, you know, you often hear like write out a list of what you want or like, you know, speak it into existence because that works very well for some people, you know? So if, that, if you think that would work well for you, experiment with it all i like to tell people is if it doesn't work for you don't think there's anything wrong with you it does it's just not the right technique for you right now it, it, too often especially in the manifesting community people think that there's these blanket techniques and there's not you know you are the technique you know it's what works best for you right now Thank you. And in, in the same group, I had someone ask, is it okay to be working with three empowering affirmations because they're going through one of my challenges where it's like, hey, just we'll work with one a day uh, for five days and then add another versus doing multiple at a time. And I gave this person that same uh, same answer. I go, well, it's recommended to do one for X, Y, Z, which I might as well say it, but it's recommended so that you can focus and, and be entirely clear and not have the distractions of multiple and process. It's just like simplifying it essentially. Whereas to your point, it's like, if you're trying to work with just one because I say so or someone else says so and they even give you science behind it, but you're sitting there like with your inner guidance being like, yeah, but there's three, that whole time you're just going to be in resistance. So listen to yourself always, always. And I think um, to your point, there are so many impressionable people in spiritual development or soul development, whereas I feel like personal development people aren't necessarily like impressionable in that kind of way. There's uh, just, there's something that comes in like the soul development and spiritual development uh, communities where people almost don't have like, haven't had solid mentors or role models in their life. So, and they outsource and start to have like a guru complex to the people that become their teachers, you know, that's, that's a great point. So important. 
is so important. And it's, it's true, like in self-development for good and bad, because there's a bad to this too. Like people are often more self-confident, self-secure already um, and not as impressionable. Uh, but you're right. I mean, it's like, that's what surprised me. And I mean, I, I know you coming from the business world too. I, I think it surprised you probably like in a way, like how impressionable and yeah. tender people are. I, still I'm surprises still, me. Exactly. As I say, I'm still not used to it at, at all, you know, like, cause like, like I'm a dude and I've got, you know, a fair amount of masculine energy, but like, I'm also pretty soft a lot, you know, I'm all about relaxing, you know, and trying to access the subconscious, but um, I'm surprised how like tender people have often are. And it's, it's, yeah, I don't know. I often feel like it would be better if people got more into some of the self-development, more pragmatic, non-spiritual stuff before they got into the spiritual stuff a lot of the time or something. I don't know. Yeah. 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 I hear you. You know, yeah. like, I mean, it's, I, yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, like, I feel very fortunate that when I had like, when I was getting into spirituality and had all these weird things happen to me inwardly, I was very young. I was a teenager still, but then when I started really looking for teachers and, you know, my late teens and early twenties, I was very fortunate to find the Zen tradition, which is just has a lot of like pragmatic, both feet are on the ground. You know, the whole thing is like, you're mm -hmm. still, you know, after enlightenment, you're doing the laundry that like that type right. of thing. Like I feel very fortunate to have that. And in the spiritual, yeah, soul seeking world, like, I don't know, people are in the clouds yeah. and like they get lost. I feel like a lot of the time, it's just a bummer, man. <laughs> for, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, I know for me, definitely being huge into personal development, um, I definitely had that foundation yet yeah, after doing ayahuasca, my entire world was just like, my worldview was just crumbled and shattered and I was very delicate and it took me a solid year, or maybe longer to realize how much I had been outsourcing my own sovereignty to quote unquote gurus that I didn't think I was looking to them as gurus, but I was in such a fragile state, you know, and I, I it's important to know that whether it's grief uh, from loss of a loved one or an illness or that you're experiencing or it is a spontaneous awakening or an awakening unfolding with medicine however you get there it is extremely likely that you might have like a quote-unquote solid foundation of like role models and personal development but still just the tenderness of everything and it's just so easy to fall into like oh this per person must know it all or whatever and I try my best to not speak in absolutes and not because that's like trendy and that's what people say to do, but because that's what got me into trouble was listening to people that were speaking in absolutes and being um, naive and not knowing any better, you know? Oh, that's so good. Yeah, I completely agree. I, I, it's, it's amazing in the, especially the manifesting community, how much, how many absolutes we hear all the time. And because they're so common, things become so black and white and people become inadvertently dogmatic, basically, right? The Neville community is a very good example of this. Um, and it's it, it's soul crushing. And I think it, it, it leads people on, um, a painful path a lot of the time that can be adverted by being more flexible um, and hopefully not being as dogmatic. I mean, the thing is, Sam, like you coach people, I coach people. So like, I think like when you coach people, you work with people one-on-one, -on -one, you realize really quickly, you can't be dogmatic because <laughs> everybody's different, you know? And it's like, uh, that's what like, yeah, I, dogmatism's tough. Cause like, um, a lot of these great teachers are rather dogmatic. And so like, it's very hard when you have a teacher that you really like and you love some of the stuff they say, but you assume that maybe you should love everything they say mm. because you like them so much. But the reality is, you know, maybe there's some stuff you disagree with them on. Maybe there's a lot of stuff you disagree with them on. 
And when you're new to this stuff, I agree with you, even if you have a solid foundation in personal development, it's very easy to get, um, you know, to start going down wrong paths inadvertently. And hopefully you can self-correct that. If you don't have that grounding, if you're very impressionable, you know, maybe young or like just in a very desperate situation, like, like you said, like a relationship crisis or a health crisis, you know, you hear, um, you hear a lot of sad stories again, and it's, uh, it's why we're talking about not trusting what we're saying, trusting yourself always is the compass and why you hear basically all great, you know, religion, like different lineages, religion, spiritual teaching saying you have to trust yourself first. If, if someone says, this is how you do it on the spiritual path or whatever you want to call it, um, they say this is the only way that's a it's a red flag right there in my opinion you know yeah agreed i always say like with that red flag or that guru complex that represents the red flag like that's when i run the other way that's literally why i say uh so this is bringing up a fascinating philosophical conversation here because you are so grounded and so much like you know, you have a good blend of the yin and the yang, the feminine, the masculine. And I think you're really grounded in not being like overly woo or just like all things esoteric. But at the same time, a lot of what we're talking about here is very esoteric and it's very feeling based and it's not analytical. What do you say to someone that kind of challenges what you were talking about and what you're teaching that is coming from a more maybe logic scientific type perspective yeah so there's a few things um if people are skeptical i love that i think that's an advantage in many ways for what because of mm. what we just described but only to a certain degree if we're using this masculine feminine terminology if a person just has too much masculine energy and is too doubtful um I'm not going to be able to persuade them. It's not my job to persuade them. I'm, I'm not interested in right. persuading them. They have to be at least somewhat open. So what I, but if someone seems somewhat open and is curious, um, you know, Neville's got that great line. He said, test it, test Ooh. it out. You know, um, one thing that there's a, a great short exercise. Have you ever heard of the seven day mental diet by Matt, Emmett Fox? I don't think I have. Interesting. So, yeah, yeah, it it's, um, the Seven Day Mental Diet by Emmett Fox. It's a short book. Emmett Fox is a master. Oh my gosh, that guy can consolidate a 200 page book in like 20 pages or two pages. Uh, he has an essay called The Golden Key, by the way, which is one of the great manifesting law of attraction books ever. It's like, or, or essays, it's like two pages long. Uh, but Golden Key? The Golden Key, yeah. Okay. Um, um, I, uh, yeah. Uh, real quick, Golden Key. Uh, what was his name again? I want to put in the show notes. Emmett Fox, F O X. Okay. So if go, I can't it, find it, I'll find it from you guys. It'll be in the show notes. Yeah, and I I did a a whole play, video playlist, which if you watch all the videos, it's much longer than reading the book. It's easier to read the book or listen to the audiobook on the Seven Day Mental Diet because I like it so much. Right. As, I watched one of those. I remember. Yeah, and I actually talked about the Golden Key in one of the videos. I like it so much for people who are inter genuinely curious, but very skeptical, because if you try to do this exercise for seven days, or even quite frankly, two or three days, um, it's going to challenge you and you will, uh, something will happen inwardly in the very least, if, especially if you do it for seven days. I've never encountered somebody who's done this for seven days and has not felt a shift in some way or seen an external shift in their life. So um, that's if someone wants to be kind of, if someone's questioning and like almost challenging, like, well, does this stuff work? Like, that's, that's a good exercise to try. The science, Sam, you know, this is what's interesting. This is how we can like link back to Kuwe. Um, Kuwe is the most persuasive argument I have when I talk to people about this not being overly, not making it overly esoteric. Emile Kuwe was a pharmacist uh, and he dabbled in basically hypnotism because the region in France he lived in was 
actually just had great people who were into hypnotism, but he was, he was the pharmacist who basically figured out if I tell somebody that this medicine works well, it works better for them than if I don't say anything or let alone say it might not work. He's basically considered one of the fathers of the placebo effect, but then he really figured out how to incorporate the placebo effect in suggestion, auto suggestion with the masses. And what's interesting is that his success rate when people came to see him was very high, like over 50% of people would feel better after just seeing him once. And a lot of people would uh, be cured and he would say would have cured themselves after seeing him just once or a few times of serious ailments. And he never used very esoteric language. He just said, this is your, this is how your imagination works. This is how the body works. We don't know it, but basically we are subverting ourselves and uh, not helping ourselves by how we, how we think. And if we can figure out how to think and imagine better, more properly, we will heal ourselves in many ways. And he was so down to earth and so successful um, at his peak in like the 19 teens and early 20s, he was literally helping uh, cure, and he would say self-cure, they cured themselves over 10,000 people a year. Wow. And he was, a, he was basically established, uh, or excuse me, basically accepted by a lot of the French medical establishment. And um, he just, he's kind of a forgotten name. And when he died and he died in 1926, when he died, it slowly faded away. All of these famous early 20th century, mid 20th century law of attraction teachers knew about Kuwe because he was very well known, but he was, he just wasn't that metaphysical about it. And he was more effective than any of the metaphysical teachers we all know and love. So I, I, I believe a lot of the modern science. I think it's very interesting, but the guy for me that I would have people look at is just Kuwe because it's very persuasive um, and very interesting. I feel like I asked you this question last time you were on the show and this is just me um, needing to do repetition and you can't integrate every single thing. And I probably said I was going to do on the last show after I asked you about it too, but this time I will. What is the best like introductory resource you have for Kuei's work? Is it an audible, a book, a YouTube video, something you have like share it with us and I'll put it in the show notes guys. <laughs> Yeah. And don't worry, as you know, Sam, repetition is the mother of all learning. You know, that's what it's all about. And Kuwe was all about repetition too. Um, I, you know, I, I edited a book of, of Kuwe's teachings and some wonderful commentary by people who worked alongside him and, and knew him. Um, it's called Simple Self-Healing. Simple Self-Healing. Got it. That's, I intentionally edited it. So, I mean, I've gotten a lot of feedback over the years from people who are not into metaphysical stuff who've liked that book and found it very digestible. So I would say that's a solid one. My favorite manifesting book is a book that Kue authored or some of the people he was, you know, with basically put together called self mastery through conscious auto suggestion, but self mastery through what was that conscious auto suggestion, conscious auto suggestion. Okay. That'll be in the show notes as well. Conscious auto suggestion is what most people today would just call affirmations. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I mean, on my YouTube channel, I do have so many videos about Kuwe and about Neville, but they're like, some of them are very straightforward. A lot of them are super esoteric too. So it's like, it, for, for people who are new to Kuwe, um, simple self-healing is, is a good place to start. Otherwise, self-mastery through conscious auto suggestion. And I really, if anybody who's interested in manifesting, I mean, you've heard me say this before, Sam, I, I really suggest looking at Kuwe because he explains most of the main manifesting concepts that we hear all the time in very, very grounded language. And he had, this is the other thing I, I meant to mention, is he had incredible success with peasants and with children because they were open to it and they were, you know, they, they were impressionable but they were luckily impressionable to the right guy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, I just, I'm still stunned. 
in a similar way that I'm stunned with how impressionable and, and tender a lot of people are in the spiritual community, I'm still stunned that Kuwait is not talked about more. And I hope part of my work is to have more people just explore Kuwait because it's not it's not about his method or affirming, you know, that's great. That's a cool method, but it's more about what he's saying, you know, like his, his bigger point um, is so profound. I, I, I feel you. And my, my tin foil hat is telling me that, that he's probably not talked about as much for the same reason Nikola Tesla is and talked about much, you know, there's probably some sort of hidden agenda behind it. That's my tinfoil hat moment. But I just looked up both of these links and this uh, this book that I'll listen to that is written by Tim Grimes has over 504.6 stars out of five ratings on Amazon. That's amazing. And it's a two and a half hour, two hour, 45 minute listen, simple self healing. So 518 reviews, nearly five stars. That's amazing, Tim. Congrats on that. And I can't wait to listen. It's only three hours. So I'm putting it in uh, the show notes. The other one, simp- uh, self-mastery through conscious auto-suggestion. That one's also got over 600 uh, ratings. That one is actually written by Emil Kue. And that one is only 54 minutes on Audible. So I'm getting excited because that's about less than four hours of listening time. All yeah, right. you get into Kuwait, you're, you're going to like it. And I didn't, I don't know why it says like, by me. I, I just edited it and cura- it will say in the credits if you listen to the book or ri- I just edited some of Kuwait's best works, similar to some of the Neville books I did, just edited and consolidated some of, ne- of Kuwait's best teachings and then some additional commentary from other other people who were with him i just wrote the introduction i mean you're curating you're curating <laughs> yeah and, exactly you know, that's what lot. i tried to do is curate, yeah. curate and, uh, i think that's cool tim you know to be honest because um you know a lot of times it's interesting where i was going with that question about like the skeptics was i had this podcast on where this guy you know had half a million followers whatever and very well studied by a ton of different cultures and i was sharing like kind of personal feelings right like what we're talking about now and like go with what feels good and we kind of uh butt heads a little bit because everything with him was like well what is that based on right you know and i think there is so much in our society that comes from that masculine and that's like no i need i need scientific evidence or even if it's not science like what philosophy that is hundreds or thousands of years old is that based on because if that's just your thought and feeling that doesn't matter <laughs> you know so to to meet people where they're at and also take something that's established that you resonate with and that there's no reason to recreate the wheel. You're just getting it out there. That's an amazing thing. It's being a curator, you know? I wish more people were into that, honestly. I mean, like that was my original idea with Neville stuff too. And ne- the Neville community has gotten a lot bigger in the last 10 years, but I was like, I just want to share this with more people in like a digestible manner, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think it's, you know, it's so important. Like when you find, when you do find teachers, you really resonate with, um, I do think it's very worthwhile to go back to, you know, we're talking about reading our own books. Mm-hmm. I think it's really worthwhile to go back and study what you really resonate with a lot. If it, and like, for me, I can, I can tell you, like, you know, I've read and studied so many different manifesting law of attraction type teachers over the years but Kue is the only guy that I go back to all the time, like all the time. So for me, it's like, yeah, I mean, I would be doing myself and everybody a disservice if I didn't talk about him a lot, because he's like, for me, like he's the backbone of a lot of the stuff I try to integrate into my own life. Mm-hmm. And I, again, I don't mean it in like a technique way. Like I'm not that into affirmations, for instance, but like what he's saying about the imagination and relaxation. And like, if you think it's easy, it becomes easier. If you think it's hard, it becomes harder. I'm just so glad I encountered that information, you know, and um, any teacher, you know, that you really like, if you like reading them, like listening to them, do it often as, a, as opposed to always exploring new stuff. Cause you know, 
like you say, why you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If, if there's stuff that you like and that works for you, that resonates with you, rely on that as opposed to always be seeking the next shiny object because mm. there's a good Call me out, bro. <laughs> no, I mean, we all I'm, do I'm that. joking. I'm joking. No, no, I'm I know. <laughs> we all do that though. I mean, yeah. you know, we get curious. It, it, curiosity is a great thing, you know? And like, we see all these interesting teachers, right? Like online. But then what I found like just soberly over the years, especially with manifesting stuff, because that's like, you know, what I deal with a lot is that kind of teaching is it sounds fascinating. Maybe I get something from it. It's great. Right. But like when I get into this new shiny object, I shouldn't spend all my time just on that for months on end. I should spend some time on that if I'm interested in it, but still be relying more on teachers like Kue or the stuff that I know deeply has impacted my life. And if I do that, it's more balanced, you know, and then it's like, like, I don't like these days, like I've been at this long enough that like, I'm not like, I used to almost get worried when I found something really exciting. You know what I mean? I was like, Oh, how long will it take to like, to like, till I'm calm about this. You know what I mean? Like, cause it's not till I'm calm that I can really start analyzing its worth. And sometimes that takes, I mean, I'll calm down relatively quickly, but like to actually analyze how effective this could be in my life, that might take a year. Right. Like, Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's a long way away of saying just rely well, on rely on what you really like. <laughs> th- these are great and excellent points, Tim, because you know I, I feel like a lot of the listeners of this podcast are a little bit newer on the journey, and it doesn't really matter where you're quote unquote at on the journey. I need I, I always have to come back to this personally, where it is the shiny object syndrome, and I do feel like I'm drinking from a fire hose, but especially when you're very very, very, very early on, you're going to want to check out this rabbit hole and that one and this and that. And blah, 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 blah. So Tim's point, you're probably listening and being, well, I don't know where, you know, I don't know what's really grabbing my attention. And to that, I think what we would both say is just, that's good. Try these different rabbit holes, but also don't get stuck in that masculine energy of needing to finish whatever rabbit hole you're in. Like for example, with books, you'll start to find that if you start to read multiple different books and topics, you'll probably leave one behind. And then by the time you pick up that book, maybe it's a few months or year or years later, you're going to notice that, oh, wow, I left off exactly where I'm at now. And this is how you're starting to learn your intuition, you'll start to see what really resonates. So having said all that, Tim, I know we're um, coming up on time, at least what we had scheduled. How, how much time do you still have? Because I have a ton of questions for you, but we can save Let it. Let me check my phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Cause I would love to stay on for a little bit. Even five minutes. Oh yeah. No, I definitely have five minutes. Oh yeah. No, my wife just sent me a photo of my children with other children playing in the splash park. So we are good. <laughs> oh, you're no, I've good. Got, I think we got probably at least, I can go for at least another 10, if not 15 minutes, Sam. And I'm, I'm loving oh, okay. this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm really glad too that like we're touching on, I hope it's not too like nitty gritty or I don't want to say the word. I've been using the word nuance so much, but like, like we're talking about writing and stuff and, you know, I know we're going down rabbit holes with some of this stuff. Like it's all relevant, hopefully. Like we're all pointing at the same thing. So yeah, anyway. Agreed. Yeah, cool. So I have a bunch of questions here. So one of which is some people are of the belief to not talk about your manifestations uh, with others or maybe not so much with yourself, but with others. Could you speak to that a bit? Why you wouldn't talk about your manifestations? Yeah, I'm a pretty huge believer in that. (laughs) All right, let's hear it. Um, So again, normal disclaimer, you got to do what feels right. But this is the thing. I, th- I think, in my opinion, when something quote unquote manifests or demonstrates in your reality, in a way, it's like the universe did it, God did it, or whatever you want to call it. Maybe you played a part in it. Sure, you co created, or if you want to use that term, but it's not like you did it. It's like something aligned that you tuned into and it happened 
So when we say I did that, I manifested this, I first of all don't think that's accurate to say, say that. I also think that you're really putting yourself in a difficult situation because people are going to ask you about it. And whatever you tell them is not going to be accurate for how you did it, <laughs> really, unless it's very like um, pragmatic. And if you're new to this information, it, you're not. You're going to be too emotional how you talk, or you're going to personalize it too much. It's going to become too masculine, ego-driven. Um, you know, like there's a saying, I'm going to be paraphrasing this, but say, a saying like, you know, there's people who go to church and pray in front of everybody and they're, they're well loved by their neighbors and the people in the church. And then there's people who pray alone and they're well loved by God. Like in that, like, uh, that always resonated with me. I, I, I don't like talking about stuff. <laughs> when I give examples from my own life, it's usually purely from a, a, a hopefully like a practical teaching perspective when I'm going and when I'm in the quote unquote middle of something, or like when I'm working on things, like I, I do not share that with others uh, with some key exceptions. If I'm working with a coach or a therapist or a counselor or a facilitator of some sort, I definitely will share it with them if it feels relevant because they're helping me through this process, through this facilitation, mm. but I will not, I do not talk to uh, people about this. Even people like, um, like even like in a friend, and I've learned this more so. Even like, like even like you, Sam, or like you know some of the few. I don't have that many friends really in like the manifesting community, but like even people I speak to, like I'm not like oh I'm trying to manifest this now. I never, I I really know. I might speak like broad, speak broadly, right? But like. No, like my, like what I'm doing, like the quote unquote techniques I'm using or whatever, like that's between the universe and myself, God and myself. So I, I know I'm rambling here, but I think the point should be pretty clear. Yeah. So let's unpack this more. This is exciting. So um, it, there's a really good friend of mine. Uh, we were chatting uh, about this very topic and uh, what she said is, because I get like this puppy dog energy where it's like, oh, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. And for me, like that's the part of myself, like going to parts work that's starting to uh, gaslight myself. And this is what she helped me come to. It was, I didn't come to it. She, she kind of said it, but it's like um, what we're doing is we're needing external validation that it's really a selfish thing where it's for us. So we're thinking that we're sharing it with the other person, but we're just wanting their excitement so that we can feel uh, their excitement to feed off of that energetically to uh, put more into it. And then if you share it with someone who meets it with resistance or just isn't excited, then now you've just given your power away. And when she said it in that kind of way, I was like, whoa, that's a good point. And then I started to be like, well, should I not? share this with you then and her point was basically what you said i mean we're friends and she didn't say this but she was kind of alluding to it like she is a mentor right so and she is further along the path with this so she's like it's okay with me but not necessarily other people i'm like but why and then explain that why i'm like, okay cool but to your point like I get excited and I don't know if a lot of people get excited or they're more like you or they might be like a little bit private, but for people for whatever reason that feel like they need to share it or they desire and want to share it, why? Because what, what really came through for me was like, it's between you and the universe creator and everything that's happening, right? Um, and that you are private, but why would you not share it with someone else? Is it because of the reasons I just said, where you're kind of like outsourcing your sovereignty and giving your power away and seeking external validation? So they're in that energy, you're blocking it. Like what exactly is happening here? This is my analytical mind that yeah. needs to understand no, it. It's a great question. Yeah, It's a great question. Yeah. I would say yes to that. And in layman's English, I would say this, the other person's not going to understand what the F you're talking about. They're not going to get it. They're probably not going to get it. They're not going to get it. They're not going to lift you up. They're not going to facilitate 
that change. Even like I said, even with friends, like I don't even do like, it's like even a friend, if we're just having a friendly conversation, right? Like if we're, if like we want to get deep and we're talking like, you know, when you have people that you know, and like, and you, and they're into this stuff and you want, you can bounce stuff off each other and facilitate something. But generally speaking, any type of normal conversation or even any type, even a conversation like with a spouse, for instance, or a partner or a good friend where you're having a beer, if they're not really into this stuff, I, I, I just would never do it anymore. But I, 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 if people are though, people are. Stop. <laughs> yeah, see, because everything in me is like, it's the lesson that's coming through is practice what you preach, practice what you preach, because everything in me is wanting to say something while you're talking. When I tell people like it, when you get that, start to come your inhales and exhales to be more present with them. And then the question that I had was like, um, well, no, I want, I want, like, it's almost lonely. It's lonely. That's what it is. Like, if I don't share it, then it's like, it, it, I'm holding a secret. It feels like, and this isn't a fun energy. And all this is bringing me back to the wizard that I saw Peter Evans, uh, right before coming across your work, when everything came online, that, that quote unquote wizard, this energy healer, basically I, I paid him money to yell at me for an hour and tell me to uh, basically shut up and not ask so many questions. So it's bringing me back to that. And I think that's the answer and the lesson for anyone that's kind of resonating with me with this energy of being like but i want to share i want to share and like oh it's lonely if i don't talk and here i am rambling and it's a good it's all coming through right now that it's like i think a lot of my blocks and being stuck right now is because i speak too much and i'm sharing too much of what's happening you know so this is really helpful to me and i i hope it's helpful to some listeners too so thank you i'm sure it is and listen i don't I actually think that's two separate things. I think it's fine to ramble. I mean, I'm a rambler too. So mm -hmm. maybe from one rambler to another, but I think it's fine to ramble because that's like, a, that's a curious energy. That's an energy of exploration. It's also an energy of like a, not just like, like a teacher energy, but also more like a guide, like a friend, you know what I mean? Like people trust you. Cause like, you're like, you're not only their coach, like you're the, you're their friend, like your friendly guide. And that rambling energy I think is great. The secrecy thing is something else, I think. I think that's more just like, it's what you said. I mean, it's just like for the important stuff, the, the, the inner work you're doing on yourself, it's between, yeah, I just think it's between you and God. And like, if you want to facilitate it in a special space, you know, but with a therapist, teacher, coach, whatever, wizard, that's great. But like, just, it's not normal. It's not normal. A, a book, this is like, if we want to get esoteric, a teacher I've really gotten into who's super esoteric, not for beginners, generally speaking, is Joel Goldsmith. Uh, he's got a book called Invisible Supply. And I think chapter two or three of that book is called like, it's something about, it's about, it's about what we're talking about. It's about secrecy. Like the, uh, I want to say the primal secrecy or something. It's all about in his opinion, the importance of, of keeping this between you and the universe, you and God. So Invisible Supply, one of my favorite books for sure. I love that book. And chapter two or three is about secrecy. If anybody wants to get way far out about this stuff, that's not Kuwait. That's super esoteric. Um, that's like Neville on steroids. Um, but uh, I, the longer, this is something, Sam, for me, because I'm, the same as you like i i love sharing and i come from a house where like everything was out in the open like people didn't keep secrets and like my most of my adult life i was just like i i would just share i i, I didn't like secrets i like to just be very open with people i still love being open with people i have problems when i'm like unable to communicate what i want right but I have learned when it comes to like the inner work i'm doing on myself that i have to keep it private because even good friends, even potentially my spouse is not necessarily going to understand what's going on inwardly. And like with my wife, I end up speaking to her about these things, but it's not like right after it happens. Usually it's more like withdrawn, you know, and that just, again, is something I practiced and got gradually better at. It wasn't like I had an aha moment. I was like, you know what? I have to keep all this private. And there's plenty of stuff that, uh, 
you know, I think plenty of people would say you should keep private that I don't and that I just ramble on about. But like, this is different. This is your, this is, you know, this is your work, you know? So that's, you know, between you and the universe or God, whatever you want to call it. What, what's coming for me is it's like a 2.0 of relaxation and it's furthering the point of relaxation because I think a lot of times when I think about relaxation of your title of the book or what these people will talk about, um, relax more, try less, all this is like these things we mentioned earlier, whatever it is for me, maybe go on the beach. You know, if I go out, surf, like I want to surf today to be in my masculine and keep up a streak of over a week long. But the feminine in me is like, no, that's just not in alignment. Like it would not be relaxing to go for a surf, right? And I need some relaxation, whatever that looks like to you. But the 2.0 of relaxation is this energy of wanting to share and then relaxing and being like, you don't need to share. Because I, I, as you're speaking, it brings me back to when things were coming online, I wasn't sharing a lot, to be honest. I was really taking, now I remember, I remember applying this advice and the scolding, whatever, and I wasn't sharing a lot. And I think it, I was being misunderstood by some of the people close to me that I was uh, being private or being a little bit weird. But I was I was practicing this and I did feel more relaxed by not sharing so much, even sitting in the discomfort, which is very counterintuitive and something interesting that just is coming through. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's what we're all I'm not all about, but that's a big thing I think both of us are into is like you sit with it. And listen, if you really want to share something, share it. My gosh, it's just like. Yeah, generally speaking, there's a reason they say pray in secret, right? Meditate mm. in secret, contemplate in secret. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, we are definitely over time. Thank you, Tim. This was excellent. And uh, audience uh, listeners, I just reached out to Tim and I was like, hey, I was actually thinking like, let's jump on another pod and I don't know what we're going to talk about, but I just feel like there's a good discussion that will come through. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Definitely check out Tim's work. I mean, I have just so many notes here that are just scribbled away and hopefully I can read my writing. But either way, there's going to be a ton of show notes. Check out the show notes. Uh, uh, top things for me, for sure, were simple self-healing. The uh, I can't read my notes. I'll look it up later. But the other book, it's going to be starred in the show notes. Oh, the self-mastery 70... through conscious auto-suggestion. You yeah, got it. With simple self-healing. Yeah, that's simple self-healing is a good start. Yeah. yeah, both those will be at the top of the show notes. There's going to be a seven-day mental diet challenge too. So much more to check out. And that sounds good. Chapters two and three of Impossible Sub invisible supply invisible supply yeah it's the Sorry. one it's the chapter name secret season the title of the that whole book is the first 50 pages of that book are like mind-blowing i'll leave you with this like he, he says in that book that supply is an inner quality the way like mm -hmm. patience or humility or uh, you know like we look at those as like virtues right he says supply your supply how you're fed, clothed, you know, your health is an inner quality that needs to be brought out. All right. It's I'm far talking. out. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kuwait, yeah. Is, Kuwait is not. Um, no, yeah, I did it, that. It's like Bashar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's out there for sure. Um, yeah, thanks, Sam. Thank you, brother. Uh, I hope you have a great weekend and all that because we're recording on Friday. Thank you guys for listening. Tim, I will see you soon. Thanks again. See you soon. Thank you.